Now, COP Dr. George Okufundampari has been appointed acting IGP. He is taking over from James Opongwenu, who begins his terminal leave on August 1. The statement announcing the appointment of COP Dampari also named a new acting director of the prison service. The president of the, the statement reads, the president of the Republic, Nana Adodankwe Kufado, has directed the Inspector General of Police, Mr. James Opombuenu, to embark on terminal leave with effect from Sunday, August 1, 2021, pending his retirement from the police service on Thursday, 7th October 2021, until a substantive director, Inspector General of Police is appointed in accordance with the dictates of the Constitution. President Kufado has asked Commissioner of Police George Okufudam Pari, PhD, to serve as Acting Inspector General of Police with effect from Sunday, August 1, 2021. The President has also asked the Director General of the Prison Service, Mr. Patrick Daku Misa, to go on terminal leave from Sunday, August 1, 2021, with his retirement from the service set to begin on Saturday, 16th October 2021. He has therefore directed the Deputy Director General of the Prison Service, Mr. Isaac Kofi Ejiri, to act as Director General of the Prison Service from Sunday, August 1, 2021, until a new Director General is appointed, also in accordance with the Constitution. President Kufado has conveyed in person his gratitude to both Mr. James Opongbuenu and Mr. Patrick Dakumisa for their dedicated and meritorious services to the nation and to the police and prison service respectively and wish them the very best in their future endeavors. And the statement is signed by Eugene Ayin, who is at the presidency. But who is COP Dampari? We bring you a profile of uh, the man who seems to be the darling of the media. So Dr. George Okufu Dampari is the youngest acting inspector general of police to be appointed in the Fourth Republic and the eighth youngest since Ghana gained independence. Prior to his appointment, he was the most senior police officer after the just retired IGP. Dr. Dampari joined the Ghana Police Service as a constable in December 1990 at age 20 and rose through the ranks to become commissioner of police 24 years later at age 44 in 2014, the rank he held until his appointment. In 1991, on completion of his recruit training, Dr. Dampari was adjudged the overall best recruit at the National Police Training School and won all awards except the award for the best marksman. Again in 1996, he emerged the overall best cadet for the 32nd Cadet Officers course at the Ghana Police Academy, formerly Police College, and won all awards, including excellence in professional police subjects and excellence in academic subjects. Now, between 2010 and 2015, under the leadership of two IJPs, this is Paul Teriakwe and Mohammed Ahmed Al Hassan, Dr. Dampari led and coordinated the National Anti-Armed Robbery Reward to Informant Initiative, which saw the arrest and prosecution of many notorious armed robbers across the country. And then as Director General in charge of welfare, Dr. Dampari introduced an innovative social welfare scheme where he led officers from the department to visit the homes of scores of sick and bedridden police officers across the country and also introduced strategic medical interventions to facilitate their wellness. In 2013, under the leadership of the then Inspector General of Police IGP, Mr. Mohammed Al Hassan, Dr. Dampari led a team of officers working day and night to restructure the Armored Car Squadron unit into the formed police unit within a record time of 10 weeks. This task had remained impossible for over 15 years. The FPU has now become one of the police units undertaking internal police operations and international peacekeeping missions under the United Nations and African Union. As a Accra Regional Commander, Dr. Dampari raised sufficient capital from the private sector to complete a new office complex and re-roofed 90% of all office buildings at the regional headquarters, which had been in a deplorable state for years. Now let's speak with Adam Bona, security analyst uh, who has been holding us on for, for some time now. now thank you very much, uh, 
Mr. Bona, uh, I recall you had an assessment of who was best placed to be named IGP at the time James Upon Bueno was to was appointed at the time COP Dampari was one of the candidates, but you didn't think it was his time. I guess it's his time now. Would you agree? Well, uh, I must say uh, it is the absolute uh, prerogative of the president to appoint who becomes the next IGP. And I would want to say uh, congratulations to my brother, uh, COP, uh, uh, you know, as he's, you know, appointed as the acting IGP. And I'm hoping that he will uh, eventually be, you know, confirmed as a substantive IGP and ensuring that the mess that we currently uh, are witnessing within the Ghana Police Service is fixed so that crime fighting would begin to be the core mandate of the Ghana Police Service. Uh, yes, uh, you know, we did, uh, what do you call it, uh, a survey some time ago. Uh, we didn't poll him that time, but we did talk about him as being one of the candidate who the president could consider. But at the time, uh, if you realize the president had did something, uh, it was at a time when uh, James uh, Opombuen was the acting IGP. And so, yes, we had done it, and but we did also still expect that even though Opombuen didn't come up, um, didn't come up tops, uh, he would, would look within and say, well, since you've been uh, the deputy IGP, uh, come on, become the acting and become the substantive IGP at the time. And so I wouldn't want to take away his shine. I would want to say that uh, once again, congratulations to me, to him and hoping that he's going to build bridges. The core mandate of the day. I must say that the president has broken protocol uh, for very long time. Uh, successive leaders have been appointing, you know, retired and tired, you know, uh, IGPs. And some of us uh, somehow would have to live with it. And so appointing uh, a far younger uh, COP to be, when I say younger, I mean by age, uh, Commissioner of Police to be the, you know, Inspector General of Police eventually, I think that is the right call. And I'm hoping that he will perform uh, to ensure that crime levels are reduced in this country, uh, Israel. Now, the statement from the presidency says he will be acting until a substantive IGP is appointed. Uh, you are saying that he hopes, you are hoping that he gets confirmed. Should we be expecting a new man? Well, I'm expecting, I am, I'm not expecting anything, uh, you know, beyond he getting appointed. I have known this. In fact, I know uh, James Opombo, he was supposed to go, I, I mean, until I picked, uh, indicated that he was supposed to live on the first of, of, of uh, June incident in the draft and the security challenges we had actually led, you know, made his, you know, going, dragged it. And so I am not expecting, the president would not uh, probably move on to uh, appoint him as the acting IGP and eventually get somebody else to come. I am rather expecting the president to probably give him two deputies. I mean, I, they have to look at their police service regulation, you, you know, investors with far less numbers, secondary schools with far less numbers, who are not there to be chasing criminals, have, uh, you know, pro vice chancellors, two pro vice chancellors, and usually two assistant headmasters. I think if you look at the, the current uh, police strength, it's about 40, 40 something thousand. The number would go up maybe by next year up to 45 or by three years time up to 55 if the current trend continues so and if you look at the changing dynamics when you talk about crime and the way it has evolved you need to have uh, an igp who would be flanked by two others performing right. either one dealing technically with crime fighting one dealing with something else to aid the igp but if we remain with the status quo then chances are that uh, we might have challenges fighting crime in this country, Israel. All right. So we'll be coming to the substantive issues and, of course, what this new IGP should do. 
But I also have with me Dr. Justice Tenkebe. He's a criminologist with Cambridge University. Uh, he has also joined us via Zoom. Now, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tenkebe. What do you make of this appointment? I, I know you've been monitoring the space. What do you make of the appointment of a COP Dampari as a uh, acting IGP? Uh, thank you for, for having me. Um, well, he's not someone I, I, I mean, I just know him from a distance. I don't really know much about him beyond uh, what is in the media. Um, and of course, if you look at his uh, record in terms of academic qualifications, experience and all that, that all sounds impressive. Um, but I think the main issue uh, anytime we have uh, appointments like these is to ask what are the challenges facing the Ghana Police Service? And what does the record of any IG uh, or appointed official uh, tell us in terms of the person's ability to understand and address those challenges? What would you say are the challenges, Dr. Tankeve? I think there are a range of them, uh, really deep. Uh, for a start, we've got a problem of confidence, a problem of police legitimacy, which requires uh, some attention. It's not a problem that has been created uh, recently. It has a very long history, dating back to uh, colonial uh, rule and all that. All right. That's a problem. When you say confidence, are you suggesting that people, the public, lack confidence in the police? I think if you look at uh, the research evidence we have, uh, there are uh, significant issues of public confidence in the police, public perceptions of the legitimacy of the police. And indeed, the police themselves, uh, they recognize this. I think some time ago, they had a, a, an intervention, a strategy of trying to build public confidence. So it's not something that they are unaware. They know that. So that's one uh, challenge they got to deal with. You also got a challenge around, if you like, training. I think it's important that we attempt to revolutionize the, 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 the training or the ideology that underpin a uh, police work. I think we should, it would be interesting to see what his ideas are, because my own view is that we should, we are living in a democracy, a liberal democracy, we hope. And so we should think of uh, a police force that defines itself as protecting the rights of citizens. And of course, some of those rights is the right to life, the right not to have some violence or uh, aggression on one's property. So in that sense, fighting crime is, is one of the things they need to do. But those are not the only rights that we have under the constitution. And the police are critical in protecting those rights. And my sense is that for a long time, again, this dates back to their history, policing has been defined purely in terms of crime fighting and property protection, which leads us down some sometimes dangerous roads of a highly militaristic response uh, to crime in, in ways that I think lead to some of the violence we have from the police, the lack of accountability and so forth. So that, that's another challenge that he at least, he should begin to have some conversations, right? right. Uh, and plant the seeds towards making some of those. Uh, All right, I want you to hold on for me and I'm going to uh, Mr. Bona. So you've heard uh, Dr. Tenkebe talk about the challenges he feels that is facing the Ghana Police Service right now. Would you agree with him? What are your own observations? Yes, I agree with him entirely. Uh, I agree with him entirely, especially we seem to have a Ghana police that is mimicking the military. Some of us have repeatedly mentioned that there is a reason why the constitution defines what the police's role should be and what the military's role should be. But over a very long time, uh, you realize that you have police officers who are usually not very friendly towards citizens. Uh, you have a police service who uh, sometimes citizens fear to approach. And, and so that has created a certain disconnect. I want to see a situation where the police begin to perform policing duties. The police begin to see citizens as you know, people they are supposed to enter, uh, you know, uh, coexist with and move away from uh, the, this, uh, call it sometimes the brutal way of cracking down on citizens and, you know, citizens sometimes taking 
police own and sometimes also uh, call it fighting back. I want to see an IGP. I mean, I, you know, would uh, Dampari, I know him, not from a distance, and I would want to uh, say that I am expecting him to build bridges. Build bridges in the sense that as an IGP, his core mandate will be to ensure that he does things that would bring everybody on board. Uh, so much so that when the officers who his superintendent over feel very confident and believe that uh, he's going to die for them, by extension, they would go out there and ensure that Ghana remains, uh, Ghana becomes as peaceful as we want. But when it becomes where you have the over politicization of the probably the work of the IGP, you have, if you know Edra, what happened in Edra, and people, citizens around the area, everyone, every now, everyone now, most people in Ghana now uh, want to use the military as against the civilian police whose role is to ensure that they coexist with citizens. I want to see an IGP who would, you know, let's see a certain paradigm shift from the old policing way of tackling uh, citizens as if these are military officers and uh, probably dealing with the welfare issues. I think I have worked closely, I mean, I, all of them work closely with them and you realize that from bottom to the top, top to the bottom, and you realize that, uh, you know, welfare issues are issues that bother a lot of these officers within the various barracks. Go to Accra Central Police Station. You will notice that this is the nerve center of this country. All right. And it is nothing to write home about. So I think that there's a lot for him to do, but if it is left for him alone and there is no support, from everyone, all hands on board. It's going to be very challenging, uh, Israel. All right, now, one of the issues that uh, keeps coming up is the fact that we've had successive IGPs who were unable to stand their ground against the executive. Do you think anything is going to change with this latest appointment? Uh, with regards to standing their grounds? Exactly. Uh, you know what? I would want to give him my fullest support, and I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. But looking at how polarized this country is, everything, when you drink water, depending on which side of your lips you use in drinking the water, you either MPQ and DC. So I would want to give him uh, that benefit of the doubt and see how is he going to approach, uh, you know, the young, exuberant politicians who sometimes want to take advantage of everybody. I probably, the next, uh, by the end of this year, let's give him by the end of this year, and see how he's able to probably, you know, this issue of uh, politicizing his office and the little thing, uh, IGP, you know, office, they are calling him to let go this, to let go that, to arrest this person. I think if he's given a free hand, he would perform. I would depend on he himself, how assertive he's going to be. At least we have had somebody like Peter Namfori. There are several of them. But in terms of, How people perceive their own, you know, security is yeah. a perception. Let's see uh, IGP Al Hassan introduce the visibility, and uh, or uh, what's the name? Uh, David Asantiapie, to my good friend, brought in the police transformation agenda. All these things were another way of trying to see how the police can be transformed. I think uh, Dr. Yankebe raised issue about training. Training is core. You cannot deploy police officers who are not trained. You know, and you know, in the last uh, last year before elections, police officers went to police training. All right, we're having some challenges uh, with uh, Adam Bona. So we'll go to Dr. Tenkeven. I'll put the same question to you. We've talked about having an IGP who can stand his ground and uh, deal or deal, deal decisively when it comes to issues with uh, politicians. Do you think that this would be crucial in the success of this latest IGP? Look, I, I think you ask a, 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 a critical question right? because policing does not occur in a political vacuum. And indeed, as many criminologists have said, the greatest obstacle to reform in the police service, to making it more professional with integrity and all that, is corruption in the wider political environment. Okay, so he's starting, he's being parachuted into an environment 
that is so, not conducive in that sense. So I think the first thing this is one of, one, this is one of the challenges that he. I think I share. I think your colleague will be. This is one of the challenges that he has to try to address. But as we also know from the histories of many uh, police uh, 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 services, political independence is not something that the political elites wake up one morning feeling good about themselves and they say, hey, the police service, you can have political independence. No, because the political elite in almost every country fully understand what a threat an independent police service mean or poses to them. And so it's important that, as has been so, uh, mentioned earlier, the police themselves have to be willing to assert themselves to make the sacrifices. And when I talk about sacrifices, they might be just a career sacrifice, right? To try to create an, a police service that is independent of uh, uh, political interference. So that is really key. W without that, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, very little will change. Justice uh, Tankebe, who's a criminologist with Cambridge University, and earlier we've been speaking with Adam Bona, who's a, a security analyst. <laughs>